means we give up on you if you are saying amen say better amen whatever falls i vow not to let you go will be laid to rest if you are saying amen say better amen in this month of july your destiny will be announced your destiny help us we locate you you will not crawl on your path of success if you are saying amen say better amen whatever good you have seen in others that needs to appear in your life this month it will manifest for you if you are saying amen say better amen it shall be well with you i say it shall be well with your family it shall be well with your destiny it shall be well with you your weeping season is over this month there will be all round laughter for you in the mighty name of jesus christ if you are saying amen say better amen. amen that force that is attacking you in the dream will be buried this week i said this week that that force will be buried that strong man that i vow not to let you go will be laid to rest this week if you are saying amen say better amen in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ congratulations welcome to the month of enough is enough put your hands together for the lord and please take your seat in second service we're going to focus on rescue from evil plans and thirdly the third service rescue from the hold of the strong man hallelujah don't forget our teaching series for the month of july which is our month of enough is enough spiritual brand of wine that triggers violent faith the violence of faith whatever any one of us want to become in this kingdom you need violence tell your neighbor you need violence violence is god's nature i don't know where you got your own nature from If you think you are gentle, me too, I'm gentle. Am I not gentle? Am I not gentle? Don't I look gentle? <laughs> Gentility is in the face, but in the heart, you must be a lion. whatever you want to become in this kingdom you need violence whatever you want to take in life you can't take it by dialogue you can only take it by violence since the day of john the baptist until now say with me now the kingdom of god Suffer it violence and the violent take at it. And Jesus himself said, The kingdom of God is within you. I have given into thy hand. Sihon the Amorite, king of his born, and his land, begin to contend with him in battle and possess it. 
You are either fighting something or something is fighting you. Whatever you want to take, you need violence. Because there are forces that will not allow you to have your desire or what you deserve when you want them. Hear me? If the enemy is the one that decides what you get per time, you will not get anything. You will not get anything. If the enemy is the one that decides where you reach by time, you will not go anywhere. There is a time to be quiet. And there is a time to react violently. God himself said, through the mouth of David, I am a man of peace, but when I speak, they are for war. When you are attacked, hindered, frustrated spiritually, you don't say, oh Lord, have your way. You attack back. You do what? Many of us give too many carnal reasons and also carnal approach to the things confronting us. Even healing to you need violence. The man by the pool of Bethesda stayed there for 38 years. That's not his years. Though. Who knows, maybe he was 17 or 18 or, 17 or 20, but 38 years. The angel comes to stare. He comes to stare. Was looking for who will help him. Everybody is fighting for his own. Jesus asked him, would that be made? Oh, he said, I have no man. I have no man is not your problem. You need violence to take your healing. You need violence to enter into your marital destiny. You need violence to take your heritage in Christ. You need violence to go forward. You need violence to be established. You need violence to be fulfilled. Whatever you see around your life is only a fruit. Say with me, it's a fruit. But until you deal with the roots, the fruit will keep appearing. Deal with the root. Deal with the root. What does it mean to be violent? No more shit. I'm not taking this shit again. I'm not taking this insult again. I'm not taking this reproach again. It is time for a change. I can't bear this delay anymore. I have seen enough disappointments. I have suffered enough setback. It is time to go forward. Enough is enough. If everybody has a chance, you have a chance. If anybody can make it, you can make it. God did not create you a failure. Don't think like a failure. God did not create your family poor. Don't baptize your children with poverty. The attack 
of the enemy on your life on your career on your business on your family on your heritage is not normal if you say it's normal then you are a witch like them when forces are vowed to stop you to get you grounded to get you frustrated what you tolerate is only comfortable with you. It means that you are comfortable with what is happening. You are comfortable. Are you comfortable with lack? Are you comfortable with lack? There is a degree of warfare mentality every one of us need to end the harassment of the devil. To end it. You can end it. I say you can end it. Amen. Scripture says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory. That overcome the world, even our faith. You are born of God, so you can overcome. Like I've always told you, which I am going to repeat again now, every human being has 1% madness. Just wait, let their 1% madness jack up. You will see trouble. There is no quiet wife. The day your wife choose to give you a hala, you go no say she no get Paulina face. <laughs> Am I saying something to somebody? The day she ready to give you a hala, her one percent madness don't come up. That day you may sleep outside though. Am I saying the truth? So you can end every harassment of the devil in your life. You can end it. But for you to end it, you need violence. When you sense, when you see the attack of the enemy on any area of your life, you focus your energy in that direction. Attack back. Tell your neighbor, attack back. When you sense the enemy attacking your business, don't play soft. Let me tell you, Satan can use anybody. When I mean anybody, he can use pastor. He can use deacon. He can use deaconess. He can use elder. He can use anybody that is available. One of my rules that I got from my master, don't take anybody for granted. If anybody wants to be used of the devil to fight you, fight him back. If he dies, let him die. So I watch out on everybody around me from pastor two. To pastor three everybody if you want to be used your journey stops not my own your journey stops not my own how many people have left to hear the as the ministry failed td jack said anybody that leaves you is not supposed to go far with you period Anybody that messes up around you was not ordained to go that far with you. It's as simple as that. Did Jesus go far with Jesus? Didn't he end his career? He opened up so he ended up. 
If you open up for the devil, you end up your journey. You don't end up anybody's your own. So when you see an attack on your job, on your family, hear me, attack back. Whatever you don't confront is permitted to remain in your front. You don't watch bad markets. Be like, see, everybody in a bad market, now you. Everybody is not seeing bad market. Am I saying the truth? As they say, they were doing an Igbo uh, election yesterday. Did market open or not? Say the truth. Is it every Igbo man that went for the election? Didn't they open market? Some when they see their customer, they say, I did, I did. I know go any election. <laughs> So you can't claim bad markets for everybody. You can only claim bad markets for yourself. When the enemy is attacking your family peace, hear me? Don't sit and be watching attack back. When the enemy is attacking your children, don't say, okay, it's what they are doing in school. Attack back. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold, casting down every imagination and anything that accepted itself above the knowledge of God so you must tear down you must pull down you must crush tell your neighbor you must crush Ephesians 6 let's read this from verse 10 finally my brethren be strong. Tell your neighbor, be strong. In the Lord. And in the power of his might. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places there are high places and there are low places when someone is manifesting wickedness against you he's taking others from his organ above wickedness in high place so he's in the one in the low place so he's the one that has been planted to execute the wickedness Continue, don't off that scripture. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil days. The days are evil. Do you agree with me? And having done all to stand. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loin guard about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness verse 15 and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace verse 16 now above all tell your neighbor above all above. taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench how many faith is a killing weapon Faith is a weapon of massacre. Taking the shield of faith. Whereby you shall be able to quench. If someone is voluminous with 
satanic poison against you, you have the anti-venom. The anti-venom is faith. Taking the seed of faith, whereby you shall be able to quench. The word quench means to extinguish. The word quench means to eliminate. Taking the shield of it. So if someone is fighting your marital destiny now, and as far you don't marry, now you they delay. Now you they delay. Anyone that has vowed that I will not marry, I prophesy against you, die by fire. Simple. You have released his faith, must catch him. Taking the shield of faith. Whereby you shall be able to quench. To quench means extinguish. Eliminate. Terminate. Go and check your dictionary. To quench all. Not some. All. Say with me all. Hear me? From today. Whatever look like a harassment of the devil around your life, you will quench them one by one. If you are saying the man say better ever. You can quench sickness. Taking the shield of faith. Faith is a weapon of defense. It is also a weapon of offense. In the battles of life, faith is the arrowhead above all. Faith is the arrowhead. It is the GOC against all wickedness. Is the commanding officer. So all wickedness bows to it. The answer to the authority of faith. The answer to the authority of faith. Whatever bows to God must bow to faith. The authority of faith is the authority of the word. I have exalted my word above my name. You must know where faith is coming from so that you can be sure it cannot fail. Scripture says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So it comes by the word. Faith is strong. No wonder Papa defines faith as a spiritual force drawn from the living word to guarantee you a living proof. You draw it. You take it. There is no wickedness anywhere. Whether you call it mysterious. Faith is super mysterious. Do you know why faith is super mysterious? These words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Faith is not just word that we are declaring. Faith is a spirit. No one that scripture says we have in the same spirit of faith is a spirit. The spirit of faith is the spirit of God. We have it, the same spirit of faith. We believe. Therefore we speak. Therefore we speak. By faith we understand that the walls we are framed by the word of God. So that things which we are seeing, we are not made out of things that are seen. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So there is no wicked man in your village that should be making you afraid. 
nobody around you that has vowed a vow that uh, let me see how you get it. I will clear you from the road. And I will still take it. Just keep doing it. Let me be prophesying against you. I will be cutting you small, small. I will be cutting you. You will be, be going down. You will not know when you are wiped out. Whenever faith is at work, heavenly forces are steered up in action. So shall my word be. Anytime God's word goes, the angelic forces go. Scripture said the angel of the Lord, they excel in strength. And they bring to binding the word of the Lord. Every time a word is declared, <laughs> angelic hosts go after the word. It must not fall to the ground. But must accomplish and prosper in the thing wheresoever I send it. Matthew 11 and verse 12. And from the days of John the Baptist until what? Until what? The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violent take it, it by force. Your marriage may suffer delay, but enough is enough. Your promotion might have been delayed, but enough is enough. First Timothy 6 and verse 12. Fight! The good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, wherewith thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Tell your neighbor, fight. Like I said before, is either you are fighting or something is fighting you. Are you what I'm saying now? Whether you like fight, if you like don't fight, something is fighting you. I'm not looking for anybody's trouble. Somebody is looking for your trouble. Am I saying the truth? So if you like, say, I'm not, a, I'm not against anybody. Somebody is against you. If you like now, start from Pastor Kelly and begin to greet everybody. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. Now lie. Somebody still doesn't like your face. Whether you like it or not. Well, I'm grateful. You like my face, you don't like my face, don't stop my blessing or I quench you. you. Whether you love me or you hate me, you are confirming scripture. You are fulfilling scripture. Cross the red line. So between you and the blessing, there is an opposition. God said, I've given you, but content before you must take it. I have given into thy hand. See on the Amorite. King of Hishbon and his land. He said begin to contend with him in battle. And possess it. You don't contend. You don't possess. So the weapon of faith is ordained to deal with oppositions. On our way to taking delivery of our appointed blessing. Job 23 verse 14, he performed for me the things that is appointed for me and many such things are with him. But before you lay hold on them, you must contend. How do you deal with the opposition? Using the word violence of faith. You must agree with me, we live in a wicked world. In the midst of wicked-minded people. Daily manifesting wickedness. Attacks everywhere. 
But you have a spiritual weapon. So you must engage the violence of faith. You must engage the violence of faith. For your faith to be potent. You must regularly. Say with me regularly. Colossians 3.16 Let the word of God dwell within you richly. So you need constant dose of the word. Regular intake of the word. To ensure your faith is potent. To ensure your faith is charged. You must do what we call regular intake. To boost your faith. To charge your faith. Regular. Regular intake. Seek ye out of the book of the law and read. None of these shall fail. The word can fail. My son, pay attention to my word. Incline thy ears unto my saying, for they are life unto thee, and health unto thy whole flesh. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book of the law shall not depart. If you want to take your part, you must take it by the word. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mightest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Your work capacity will determine your delivery. You can't deliver what you don't have the capacity for. Any delivery that comes to pass through you is determined by your word capacity. Your word capacity. Another thing you need to do to demonstrate the violence of faith is prayer and fasting. You must engage yourself in a fast. Carnality must die for spirituality to be enthroned. Every time we, we get into a fast, we are subduing the flesh and enthroning the spirit. If the spirit is not enthroned, it cannot deliver. It cannot. You will be a struggling man, a struggling woman. Your spirit man needs fast the force of fasting fasting is a force and hell is contending with your fasting that is why anytime you want to engage in a fast you will become as weak as you'll be wondering what is doing you all of a sudden the desire to break the fast will just be coming to your mind i beg i know i don't tell you i beg and if someone that is living in deception you go and carry short bread or carry malt. Father, this is your flesh. And this is your blood. Just close the chapter. Satan knows that something wants to come. That's why he's giving you an option. Quench the fast. Relax yourself. It will come. Anytime you want to fast. Like this week now, we are entering the second half. If you are wise, fast. I'm not going to tell you to fast seven days. Old. Thank God we are doing the three days that you are used to. Do that three days. So that you won't go and say, Pastor, say. Are you here? I'm saying now. But if you are wise, fast. Esther said, fast. And now I will also do what? Fast. But this barrier must break. So fasting empowers and enthrones the spirit. Fasting enhances our spiritual authority. The disciples asked him, Master, why couldn't we cast out this devil? Jesus said, this kind. 
goeth not, but by prayer and what? Fasting. There is a kind that must go and there is a kind that must come by prayer and fasting. Why couldn't we? Why couldn't we? We spoke the word. We called the name of Jesus. But the thing didn't go. He said, this kind. You hear me? Fasting enhances our spiritual authority. And the moment that is done, the next thing, your word. It's not my word like fire. Every time you enter a word baptized and prayer fast, your word becomes fire. Jesus said in Luke 21 and verse 15, I give you a mouth and a wisdom which your adversary will not be able to resist nor get say. I give you a mouth. I give you a mouth. You don't have mouth if you are not in fasting. Some people have mouth, but their own has ended up in gossiping. They will be fasting though, and still they are gossiping. How will it work? And who advise you to stop gossiping? You know? Continue. As you are in church today, you will have topic. Yes, now. Is there any day they come to church that they don't have topic? Is there any day they come to church that they don't have assignment? There is always one. So continue. Don't stop. Oh. Continue. It's a tactics of the enemy to delay you further. Frustrate you further. Hinder you further. To make your mouth potent. Look at what David said. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Which means you can be rejected in his sight. You can be rejected. The words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Meaning you can be rejected in his sight. And Job 6 verse 25. How possible are right words. When right words are coming out from your mouth, it guarantees you a result. Right words. Right words. <clears throat> I believe that beginning from today, failure, frustration, stagnation will fade away from your life. Yeah. Our mouth is the trigger for our faith. Until you pull the trigger, you can't release the bullets. So your mouth is the trigger that releases faith. Jesus looked at the fig tree and cursed it. And the disciples said, Master, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered. He said, haven't I told you? If thou hast faith like that of a mustard seed, thou shalt say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. And you shall have whatsoever you say. But he said, nevertheless, this kind goeth not, but by prayer and what? Fasting. So fasting empowers our word delivery. Our word delivery. So when you speak, hear this. Every time you speak potent words, Satan becomes weak. As you speak, the enemy becomes weak. As you speak, the enemy becomes weak. So your mouth is the secret place of your faith. You can use your mouth to rescue your destiny. You can use your mouth to rescue your business. You can use your mouth to rescue your family. You can use your mouth. Hear me? You don't nurse evil. You harm it. You engage the violence of faith. You don't nurse sickness. Any sickness showing up in my body, I cause your roots. 
dry up in the name of Jesus. Every cells in our body, they have ear to hear. As you speak, they hear. As you speak, they hear. You don't know it. You speak against it. Enough is enough. Tell your neighbor, enough is enough. Beginning from today, your faith will deliver results. In this covenant day of rescue, one thing we need to look at in this first service, what do we need to be rescued from? Evil and bad habits. I like to begin by saying at this point that destiny is a product of habits. Destiny is a product of habits. Your habits can set the pace for how far you can go or how slow you can go. Your habit. Your habit determines your limits or they break your limits. Your habit determines your habitats. What do I mean by habitat? Environment. Birds of the same feather flock together. Am I saying the truth? Have you seen a vulture with an eagle? Your habit determines your habitat. What I mean by your habit determines your habitat. The way you behave will determine the kind of people that will be seen around you. Prostitutes are always found in the company of fellow prostitutes. Am I correct? Gossipers in church, they are always found in the company of their fellow gossipers. In choir, they have a member. In CCU, they have a member. In sanctuary, they have a member. CNN. They know the latest by time. Your habit determines your habitat. Students don't hang around with people that want to get past. Never. They will slow you down. I don't have any problem with who is hanging around you. You will soon be there. In one of the recent posts that I copied from Mr. Abiyo, he said, the way you are behaving is a pointer to what you will become. So anyhow you are behaving now, just be behaving. You will soon become it. But hear this, you need to be rescued from it. If not, your destiny will not see light. So no matter how good your destiny looks, no matter how colorful it looks, you can't excel with a bad habit. With a bad habit. Reuben, thou art my firstborn, but thou shalt not excel. Do you know his problem? Indecision. It was in. Did I call anybody's name? Always looking for who to blame. Thou shalt not excel. Thou art my firstborn. The excellency of my might, but thou shalt not excel. So no matter how good your destiny is, <laughs> your bad habit is your limit. But you need to be rescued from it. Because scripture is pointing you, a little one shall become like a thousand. And a small one like a great nation. Your habit can cage you.
God cannot bless you where your habit cannot keep you. God cannot bless you where your habit cannot keep you. Why? Habits control action. You may call it a reflex action or unconscious action. But the truth is that your habit is determining your behavior. When you are unconscious of your actions, you are controlled by it. Bad habits put you where God cannot bless you. Can you now see now that we need to be rescued from bad and evil habits? Ammon was the son of David. But he was a disgrace to the palace. He went and slept with his own sister. Because he had a friend with a bad habit. Check your friends. They determine your habit. Check who you call your friend. Who? Because your friend is your influence. Check your friend. They determine your habits. Any misbehavior you picked up now, you copied it from somebody. Because he's in prison, you want you to enjoy the prison with him. I'm not going to struggle with you, but you must come out today. If you love your life, if you love your destiny. Ammon had a terrible friend. Who told him? The one they see is your sister. She like you. She did fall for you. Man, this is your chance, man. Better take advantage of this opportunity. The team began to enter him. Okay, I'll go do one. Ah, simple now. Tell your papa, tell him, man, bring food, come your room. Just do like someone, we hey, could they catch. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because he had, hear me, don't just think that friendship only ends in behavior. You carry your friend's spirit. Any person you are following his ways now, following his word, following his instruction, you have carried the person's spirit. If not, how did he enter Ammon? That he could do that. The spirit has entered him. No wonder they say friendship is contagious. You can contact a bad spirit. Ammon contacted it. And before you know what's happening, he executed. Now, before you tell somebody to do something, you too, you have practiced it. Do you agree with me? That's exactly what happened to him. And his destiny was destroyed. Did we hear of Ammon again? Lie, lie. Your habit can make your destiny go extinct. That is switched off. Cut off. So bad habit puts you where God cannot bless you. Bad habits only brings our destiny to bad places. Bad places. Meeting bad people. Having bad experience. You need rescue. Paul said, When I want to do good, the good I want to do, I do not. The evil I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Who shall deliver me? Meaning, you needed rescue. If you need rescue, you will cry out. If you need rescue, you will cry out. When I want to do good, the good I want to do, I do not. The evil I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Who shall deliver me from this flesh? Who shall deliver me? Meaning, I need rescue. I need rescue.
You hear me? Let me call it the way it is. Pornography is eating up youths and adults. Teenagers. The era of phone is the era of exposure to good and bad. Anyone you want, you can choose. Somebody can be in church now and is on YouTube watching Pono. He watched Pono before he came to church. He will watch Pono as he goes back to the house. You are building up the intensity of the action. Pornography. If it is not pornography, how come you started masturbating? How did the spirit enter you? How? How? You started masturbating. Before you woke up on bed, you see everywhere it's wet. Who do you? One thing must lead to another. Now even for the married men, it's a normal thing now. Their wife is no longer fine. They are now watching porno. There was a pastor that was watching porno regularly. Before you know what's happening, he started blasting sisters. He has left the ministry. He has started his ministry in Ibadan. All the churches he pastored, he had a record. If not two, not latest. Three. Either two or three months. Must fall for him before he will move to another location. Until finally leadership said, resign. Resign! But he was, he was covering it up. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. You can be in church now. Someone is telling you, leave all these people, then they do them. God punish your father. <laughs> Me do them. God punish your papa. You can't break my covenant. You cannot. Even if you are the queen of the coast released from, from the water today, you cannot. I'm under a deadly oath. I cannot die it. That is the stake of my oil. Everybody is not messing up. So they will be telling you, do it. Man, your bondage is increasing. You are increasing the thickness of your bondage. If you marry, won't you do it? You can do it morning, afternoon, night. You can even do it six times in a day. If you want. Why kill your destiny now when the thing is waiting for you in the future? Why? Why? Before you know what's happening, you have carried what we call mental virus. That's why many of you can't read well in school again. You are reading book, you are seeing the girl, you are seeing the boy. You will laugh small, you will close the book. You need deliverance. Check your habits. You may be saying, Pastor, tell them. <laughs> your own may be in your mouth. There are professional gossipers in church. Scripture says, let not an evil speaker be established. You can never be established. Nothing good can succeed in staying in your hand. Evil speakers. They tear senior pastor. Tear assistant pastor. They are social pastor. They don't even spare their wives. As they are tearing, they are tearing everybody. But hear me? My oil will fight you. I'm telling you. They tear and tear the church. Jesus said, I will build my church. The church is not Pastor Tony's church. The church is Jesus' church. I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. 
your mouth. Some people have mouth cancer because of chronic gossiping. <laughs> Some of them, that's why they've not married though. There are male gossipers and female gossipers. Bad habits and slaves. We are going to rise up to pray. If you are not rescued from this, the plan of God for your life cannot be rescued. Because habit determines fulfillment of plan. That's why in second service, I will focus on plans. Rise up to your feet. Don't say pastor is talking about somebody. I'm talking about everybody. You are going to lift up your own voice. And cry out unto God. Say Lord deliver me from destruction. Deliver me from any habit that want to kill me. Deliver me from any habit that want to destroy my life. Deliver me from any habit... That want to crush my destiny. Deliver me from any habit that don't want me to see fulfillment or prophecy. Lift up your voice right now and begin to pray. Lord, deliver me. Deliver me from destruction. Deliver me from evil habits. Any habit that want to destroy my life, that want to destroy my assignments, that want to destroy the call of God upon me, Lord, deliver me. Deliver me. Please cry out. Scripture says, He that calleth upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus, save me. Save me. Save me. Save me from destruction. Any habit. It is written, Whatsoever my heavenly Father has not planted shall be uprooted. Lift up your voice and begin to cry out. Lord, let your fire destroy every habit. Every habit of pride. Let it be destroyed. Lift up your voice and pray. Let it be destroyed. Every habit. Pornography. Masturbation, bedwetting, gossiping, pride, lying. Lord, deliver me. Deliver me. Cry out, oh. Don't pretend. You can't pretend with one that sees you inside out. Deliver me. Rescue me from destruction, from going down. Rescue my life. Rescue my destiny. Rescue my future. Rescue my family. Lord, rescue my assignment. Rescue me. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Before I pray for you, all eyes closed, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. And you want to make it right with Jesus. So that it can be well with you. Wherever you are, inside out. Put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, congratulations. Please carry your bag and your Bible and come quickly. We have less than two minutes for this service to close. Two minutes only. If you